Hi there, I'm Chrislyn Matei, and I'm a Creative Memories Advisor and Content Contributor for the Creative Memories Home Office. Today I want to share with you a layout that I created for the Creative Memories blog that uses up a lot of great scraps and it features the Denim Revival Collection. I have had so much fun creating the layouts and projects for this collection because it's it's just what I live in. I live in jeans and I just see denim going with absolutely everything, uh, including scrapbooking. I think the denim revival papers and embellishments and stickers and all of it just works so well with pretty much every other collection we have. And I think mixing and matching them is gonna be a lot of fun. So today I wanna just create this layout that is kind of a braided look and it's easy to do. It looks a lot more complicated than it is, but it's a great chance to kind of take your little odds and ends of strips and scraps of paper and use them to create this layout. So what we're gonna need is the Denim Revival Designer Paper Pack embellishments and stickers. We're gonna need some white cardstock or the write-on stickers and the two-way corner rounder, the 13-inch cutting mat, the 12-inch trimmer, a ruler and pencil, tape runner, repositionable tape runner, foam squares, and a pen. And we'll need some scrap paper or cardstock. So to get started, let's just establish what we're gonna use as the base for our layout. And I'm just choosing something that's a little bit contrasting to the, the denim paper scraps that I have. And I've chosen this kind of beige wash uh, paper from the Denim Revival collection. You could use anything as a base. It's your, your borders are what's gonna really stand out. So I'm just gonna set this paper aside because I don't wanna cut that one up. And we're just gonna take a look at our scraps. So I've just chosen several scraps from the collection. And I've got both sides I can work with. I have just all kinds of pieces that I've pulled out from the collection. And I'm just gonna use up as much of this as I can. So if you're working with you know, full length 12 inch strips. Really what we want is we're gonna just want a whole bunch of one inch wide strips. So cutting these apart and just kind of setting them aside. And whether you wanna use both sides or just one side, it's up to you. I'm just gonna stick with denim for, for all of mine. But again, this is a great way to kind of use up pieces from other collections and, you know, combine some things and make some really interesting designs. And I, you know, we're gonna need, you know, about a dozen or, yeah, maybe about 16 to 18 of these um, little strips that I'm gonna cut. Not, not these full strips, but we're gonna cut these down and you'll see in a minute. I'm, I'm just gonna stack them all up and I'm just gonna cut two and a half inch pieces. And I'm just going to do that on a couple of them just so that I have enough to kind of start working with and I can cut more as I need to. Depending on how many different colors and varieties you're using, you might, you might need to cut multiple uh, strips with these, but we're just going to start with a few. And then I'm just going to take a piece of, you know, fly sheet paper from the paper packs. This is my scrap piece, and I'm gonna cut a two inch strip. And I'm gonna cut a four inch strip. So we'll have the bases for our braided borders. 
We're going to start with the two and a half inch strip and we're going to just align this on the 13 inch cutting mat and we're going to place it, we're going to center it and we're going to place it on the seven inch line. So you see the seven going across here and really what I'm going for, you know, I want this centered and I just want the corners to line up with this 45 degree angle on both sides. And this is just a way for us to get our braid started. So I'm just taking my ruler and I'm going to make a line at that 45 degree angle right from that corner down. And I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. And this is just a way to get started. You could, you could put your lines in different places if you'd rather have, you'll see what I mean when I, when I do this. But you could you could choose a different starting point and have this look a little different. That's entirely customizable. But this is how I did it. And so now we've just got um, our piece and we can start taping our, our pieces on here. The way we wanna do this, now you're gonna use copious amounts of repositionable adhesive. Just letting you know up front. You wanna just put Put a bead down the center and you're just going to take your your paper and you're just going to line it up and you're going to start at that corner and you're just going to place it on that line just like that so we've got one piece on there now i'm going to take another one and this one i'm going to place um below it okay so i'm just going to go like this and you really don't have to go all the way down if you want to save some of your strip just just kind of go so it overlaps this one so it's just overlapping a little bit and it's going off the edge because you could always use some of that perhaps in another spot so you don't have to align it um, you don't have to have it go all the way down you just want to cover it on the edge so now we're back to this side and again, I want to cover up that white. So I'm going to put that all the way there. And you'll see that I'm just barely, barely covering over that piece. That's exactly what we want. So let's just try another. And this side, I'm going to go again, just over that edge, just a little bit. And you can kind of see the pattern that we're going. And because of where I started that, where I drew my lines, that's kind of where these are all falling. So they're falling a little right of center. And I kind of like that look. I like that um, little bit off center look. But you could, you could maneuver this around so that it's centered or however you want it. But this is what I'm going for. <clears throat> So I'm just going to continue on and again I'm just just going over the last piece <clears throat> just so that it overlaps just a tiny bit. Let's see what other colors we have. There's so many beautiful denim patterns to choose from and I just love mixing them all up. <clears throat> I'm just working with my silicone mat because I just it just helps to keep some of this extra uh, repositionable tape from getting on my on my mat. It just keeps it a little less messy. Okay, and I can see that I'm going to need to cut some more of these. I'm just going to finish this one up and then I'll cut some more strips. So, you, you know, just kind of use as much as you want. You are going to be using these again for this four inch piece. So I'm just going to cut one more set for now with the two and a half. Let's see how far I get. Just a Isn't it fun how you can just 
take any scraps left over from a collection and you can make such a cool design. I love that. I'm going to show you some variations on this when I'm done too. And it's just kind of just to show you that, you know, this one is very tonal using these particular um, patterns, but, um, or, you know, from the tone on tone denim collection, but you could certainly really change it up and add lots of different colors. So now when we get to this point, we've just got all the, you know, these little tiny spots left. I'm gonna just take and trim this off. My scissor will just trim that little tiny piece off. And we're just gonna place this in here and trim off, in fact, I'll flip it over. If you use the back side and you can just kind of place this scrap right at the two inch mark, you can kind of see what you're doing a little bit and trim off all those extra pieces. We'll trim off the end. And we'll trim off this side. And then we can fill in the little gaps. Okay, so Looking pretty cool, isn't it? I love it. All right, I'm just gonna stick a little bit of tape on these edges. And now I'm just gonna take my scraps and I'm just gonna fill in. So I'm just gonna place these wherever I want here. And that's a little small. Take this one. Just kind of play around with it until you get these to fill in where you want. And then you can either use your scissors or use the trimmer to trim them down. And I'll do one little tiny piece up here at the top. and this border is all set. Okay, so we've got one of our braided borders done, and now we move on to the larger one, which we're gonna do the same way, only instead, now when we line this up at the middle, we were at seven inches before with the, with the two inch strip. Now we're, it looks like we're up at eight inches for where that intersects. So now I'm just gonna draw my lines again. Okay, and now we're gonna need more strips. So I'm just gonna cut a few more. We've got these left and I can just leave these as is. And we'll cut a few more. other scraps here left from the last time I did this so I'm going to use those and maybe another one here okay I probably have enough now so let's just take these you know of 
four inches is going to be about right as far as a, a size to cut these. Since we're a little bit doing a little bit larger, we'll just cut these to four inches. And now we should have enough to play with. All right, so I'm going to bring this back. And we'll start taping these down. Same process as the last time. Okay, so again, we're going to start up at that corner. And we're going to just tape down along that line. And then we're just going to keep going. So, again, you only have to pass that, that little section right there. Just go, just go past the one you just did. Okay, now again, we're at the end here, and it just makes sense at this point to kind of trim everything down. So we're just going to use our scissors or the trimmer and trim off the excess. I like to flip it over <clears throat> so I can really just use the edge of these, the scrap paper to kind of help me figure out where that four inches is, where that line is to cut that off. work our way around and cut the whole thing down. Okay, now we can just fill in all the little gaps. Okay, so up here, you know, you have to do a little piecing Whoops, to get that to fit right, that'll go this way. Maybe I'll do this one. And this here too is just a great spot to kind of use up your little scrap papers that you have left, maybe. Maybe. That'll work. We can trim that piece off. And now we'll finish up at the bottom.
Okay, let's clean up all of our scraps. And now we can pull this whole layout together. So we've got our, our border pieces and you can see now we could use them however we like. It's just It just created kind of a neat uh, little palette to do stuff, something fun with. So now we've got our base sheet and I'm just gonna adhere these on either side. And now you can look at this and say, well, this would be a great two page spread and it absolutely would. I'm, I'm repeating the one that I made for the home office for the blog right now, but I will show you in, a, in just a few minutes an easy way to make this a two page layout. A lot of the time when I'm designing for the home office, they are requesting one, one page layouts because they are using them for marketing photos. And so it's just a lot easier for them to create that marketing photo with a one page spread so that is why you see so many of those <clears throat> when you're looking at the blog i typically when i'm scrapbooking myself i always use two page spreads i that's just how i work and so that's that's what i do these are the sizes of the photos that i used in this layout as well so i'm just going to kind of show you how that goes we have let me tell you this it is five and three quarters by three and three quarters and then we have two that are two and three quarters by three and three quarters and finally we have a five and three quarters by three and what I liked on this one was just to round the corners and the corner rounder is perfect for this and I think it just with with so many angles on the layout I liked how this rounded edged photo just you know, it really just kind of softened it a little bit with, you know, we just have so many angles going on. Of course, you do what makes you happy, but this, this is um, what I was liking. And we're just going to adhere these. I'm just going to pretend these are the photos. And we're just kind of finding that little spot even evenly all the way around to put our photos in the layout. And then these two. Okay, so now we just have this kind of cool little opening right here. And so this is where I was having fun with embellishing. I really loved this sticker. So take this one off. <clears throat> and I want this to go right here. But I'm going to attach something first. There are so many cool embellishments with this collection. And I love that these little tabs, they have, you know, just this cute little opening. So it's just a perfect little spot to just thread the sticker through and be able to place this on the layout. So I'm just going to kind of carefully kind of take a look at where I want this to be because I want it to be centered. I'm just going to move this, shimmy it around a little bit. And actually, I'm going to snip it right here so that I can kind of finesse this a little bit. So if this is going to go right here, I can take this last little piece. And 
place it there. So I just want a little bit of tape for my tag. And that'll sit right there. So isn't that fun? You can you can either do it like this or mount it up on foam squares, the whole thing. Uh, this is just the easiest way um, I found to do it. Just stick it down just like that, and then we can use some more embellishments. So we've got all the rest of these stickers, and we can play with it. You can. What I love too about this collection is you can take some of these other pieces these other stickers and you can layer them so for instance if i want if i if i'd rather not have that statement i can put a different one on top which is what i did in the original um, so that's kind of cool you can just choose the statement that you like the best and everything just kind of fits together so i'm just going to pop that one up on foam squares like that and then what else do we have we've got cute little pocket that i would place somewhere up here and then i'll put this up on foam squares <clears throat> usually in a little grouping of elements i will use some foam squares on some elements and the others will be flat just to kind of create a little bit more dimension. And then let's see. Is that up there? No, maybe a, I want that down here. There's so many cute little things to choose from here. Do that. And then I'm just gonna do a little cluster of flowers on this side. Pop these up. And then maybe one other little thing over here. Let's do, let's do a star. Okay, so there's our layout. And this is just an easy way to pull together scraps to really create a statement kind of layout and it's really you know it looks harder than it is it's it's really not a difficult one to do so of course I did make a couple variations and I just wanted to show you how versatile this can be so you can you know brighten it up here I took the same same idea and I used this life paper. So just the rainbow colors, just look how different that can look. It's just totally different, but it still, it really packs a punch, doesn't it? And then I also, you know, I figure it looks really good on Fast and Fab pages. So let's just take, I've got this Fast and Fab album for this life collection. So just taking the simple border that we made and placing them on fast to fab pages, look how fun that is. It just pops. And so now you've got this whole blank canvas for your photos, but you've really got a statement border on the sides. So that's really fun. I, I love using borders with my fast to fab pages. And then I did use fast to fab pages again, and I created the layout using the Passport to Adventure collection so again you can just see the versatility a lot of times it's it's hard with uh, travel pages 
to kind of figure out, you know, a, you know, a theme or a border treatment. And I think this one works really well with travel. It's just kind of a graphic piece and it'll look great with pictures of, you know, city buildings, um, city streets, anywhere in the world. So I thought this one was kind of a fun one to do. And it was really fun then to be able to use those layered borders across the center. So just in case you are interested in recreating this, I'll give you the measurements. Um, we've got two four by six photo mats here, two four by three. And then over here, we have a six by three and three quarters. We have a six by three. And then I just cut this photo mat down a little bit so it's six by three and a half. So it tucked underneath that border. So that's it. And then you just you obviously make your photos just slightly smaller than that. And you've got your layout. So I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you're all excited to try this layout yourself. Please let me know in the comments what you think. And if you're looking for an advisor, I'd be happy to help. You just um, take a look in the, in the info section and you'll see the link to my website. And you can follow me on my Facebook page. And of course, I hope that you will follow me right here and click subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified the next time I post a video. Have a great day.